The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. There will be a time when all believers will be judged for their motives and for the quality of their work. Maybe we've heard of the judgment seat of Christ, but when does this happen for millennial believers? You've tuned in to Grace in Focus, and we thank you for being here today, friend. Grace in Focus is the radio broadcast and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We're located in North Texas, and you can learn more about us at our website, faithalone.org. We invite you there. You'll see a lot of our products there, our daily blogs, and information about our upcoming national conference, May 20th through the 23rd. Hope you'll look us up at faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Bob, we got a question from, I'm going to give the abbreviations, CS. He's asking a question related to the different judgments. We know that in the last days, there's going to be a number of different judgments. Now, these are all called eschatological judgments because the word eschatos in Greek means last, and eschatological means last days. There you go. So in the last days, after the church age, there will be a number of judgments. Yeah, like when is the church going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ? When are right. unbelievers going to be judged at the great white throne? When are people who believe in the millennial kingdom, when are they going to be judged? When are the Jews going to be judged? You know, right. Jews from the Old Testament time. So CS asked this question specifically in Revelation 20, verse 15, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. He says, and, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is what we call the great white throne, and that comes from verse 11. Right. Uh, just a few verses earlier. Right, because Jesus is sitting on this huge throne. Maybe it's an ivory throne, but it's a big white throne. Right. And it's very imposing, and it, it, I think the throne itself says something about the one sitting on the throne, that he's omnipotent. Right, and we know from Revelation that all judgment has been given to Jesus, he, right. what, and, and that he's going to judge everyone. Right. And so C.S. asked the question, well, everyone not found in the book of life is cast in a lake of fire. He asks, basically, are there going to be believers there? at the great white throne judgment who stand at this judgment. Now, they, I'm assuming C.S. says, I know they have eternal life. So what is the deal here? The, everyone, so there's going to be believers there. They're in the book of life, so they're not cast in the lake of fire. In right. other words, anyone not found in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. And then he's related to that. He wants to know, is there going to be a judgment for people who believe during the millennial kingdom in order to determine their rewards. All right, let's take the second question yeah, first. Right. There is a general principle, and we were talking about this, that everyone's going to be judged according to their works. Can you think of some verses that talk about that, that each one will be judged according sure. to his works? Yeah, here in Revelation, at the end of the book, Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly to judge each man according to his works. Right. And also, of course, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 47, it says, then the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will judge each according to his work. And you that could, would refer to believers and unbelievers. Yes, and you could think in Hebrews 11, which is talking about Old Testament men and women right. of great faith, he's talking about rewards. Right. Well, how, how are they going to get a better resurrection? Well, obviously, there's going to have to be some kind of judgment upon those who were faithful to the Lord. And this is talking about... Old Testament believers. Yeah. Right. And of course, uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that will he also reap. Believers that's a are biblical unbelievers. principle. Right. right. And that's true in the life to come, that there's going to be consequences. And in the case of church age believers, we got tons of verses that talk about we're Absolutely. going to stand before the Lord to give an account of Second what we've Corinthians done. 2 Corinthians 5, 9, and 10. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. Right. On and on and on right. and on. Lots so, of passages. Right. So if you think of there were multiple dispensations before uh, the church age, and everybody from Adam and Eve till the, the last Old Testament saint is going to be judged to determine their eternal rewards. We don't know what that judgment is called, 
And that's going to include people who were before the Jewish people, right? Adam and Eve weren't Jewish people. They right. weren't Gentiles. They were people. Right. I guess you'd call them Gentiles, but I don't know. They're the parents of the Jewish nation, right? They're the ancestors of Abraham. But once Israel is established, now you've got two separate groups. You've got Israel and you've got the nations. Well, there were believing Gentiles during the Old Testament time. Right. And those people, if they died before the birth of the church, will be judged not as part of the church, but they will be judged as the nations. We're also not told when their judgment is and what the name of that is. You know, can I just, let me interject yeah. something. I, I don't hear people talk about this very often, but when Jesus says, all judgment is given to me, just think right. about that. Just think about all the complexities here. You've got all these different peoples and all these different dispensations. Right. Some are believers, some are unbelievers. Jesus is going to judge them all. Please plan to join us at Camp Copus in Denton, Texas. The Grace Evangelical Society's 2024 National Conference is May the 20th through the 23rd. Good fun, wonderful fellowship, recreational opportunities for the younger ones and the older ones, great teaching on the theme of free grace in the epistles of Peter. There's VBS for kids, too. More information and online registration now at faithalone.org slash events. That's faithalone.org slash events. Please come and join us. Of course, we've got the church, right? Right. And then we're going to have people in the tribulation, which will either be part of the nations or the Gentiles. And then we're going to have the millennium, and those are going to be either people in the nations or Israel. All these people have to be judged. But in terms of complexity, let's say there were just, what, 100 million believers during the church age, from the birth of the church until the rapture. All of those people have to be judged within seven years if it occurs during the seven-year tribulation period. I think it's actually going to occur during a 30-day time period after the tribulation before the millennium. Because a lot of dispensationalists think it'll happen in the sky or, after the or rapture. Or in the third heaven. Right. Yeah, what you're saying is, no, it's going to be when we return to earth. But let's say it was seven years. Sure. I worked it out. It's something like 10 people judge per second. Right. And if it's in 30 days, it's going to be a few thousand people per second. Right. The point is, we can't be in the same time dimension we're in now and the same relation to time in order for this judgment to take place. With the Lord, a thousand years is like a day. Is like a day. But a day is also like a thousand years. So in a sense, we can have a very leisurely judgment of 100 million people that might take place in a day or 30 days. And in that judgment, the Lord is going to consider their motives, to whom much is given, much is expected, yep. what disabilities they had. All it, the environmental circumstances, <laughs> everything. It's, it's He's incredible. going to be completely fair. What's amazing about it is is that every one of us in our glorified bodies are going to say, absolutely, that is exactly the right judgment, yes, whatever right? he says. Exactly. The second question, will there be a judgment for millennial believers to yes. receive rewards? Yes. So now the first question is, at the great white throne judgment, will believers, people who believe during the millennial kingdom, will they stand there? In other words, I think what he's saying is, are people who believe during the millennial kingdom going to be at the great white throne judgment? And that's the point where Christ is going to say, okay, you're in the kingdom or you're not. All right. I was speaking on this at a Lord's Supper meeting at Victor Street Bible Chapel, and Zane Hodges was there, and I made some comment that Revelation 2015 said no believers will be there. And he said, um, actually, Bob, if you notice, it says, and anyone not found written in the book of life, doesn't that tend to suggest... That, there's that there people were there people who... present who were in the book of life? Right. Why make this comment? <laughs> His point was, now the way he understood this is there would be believers present as witnesses. And you've recently, I think, did a video on this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At, at our YouTube channel, and you can check it out. However, I would suggest further that it implies there will be people present being judged who are in the book of life. Not just witnesses, but people who are being judged. Now, I think I suggested this at our most recent conference, and Dr. John Nimala 
suggested that that was not correct. Because of John 5. Yeah, and what does John 5, 24 say? The one who believes in him will not be judged. Okay, He's so talking about the great white throne judgment. He who hear, hears my words and believes in who sent me, three things. Right. Present tense has everlasting life. Will not Future be, tense will, will not, not come judged. into judgment right. or will not be judged, but is passed from death into life. What I like to point out is that all three of those elements relate to everlasting life. Right has everlasting life right now, has already past tense, passed from death into everlasting life, and will not come into judgment concerning everlasting life. It doesn't mean we won't come into judgment. Obviously, every believer is going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. Theoretically, God could judge every believer at the great white throne judgment. He doesn't. For their rewards. Right. What else is he going to be judging us sure. for? Sure, yeah. He doesn't judge us for our eternal destiny. Yeah, that's my point. Because yeah. 524 says that. Right. But theoretically, he could judge everybody of all time after the millennium at the great white throne judgment. But then the problem is we wouldn't be able to rule and reign during the millennium. So the church has to be judged before the Right. right. And I would say Israel and sure. the nations as because well. Because of Daniel 12. Daniel 12, 1 and 2. John 5.24 does not rule out believers being judged at the great white throne judgment. But However, not in regards to eternal life. Exactly. Right. However, I'm open to what Dr. Niemela is saying. Could there be a separate judgment for millennial believers? Absolutely there could. Right. I just tend to think it makes a lot of sense that this judgment would include unbelievers of all time and believers from the millennium. But I don't know that for sure. So CS specifically says, what do you think about this possibility? You would say, well, yeah, it's a possibility. But the judgment for those believers who believe during the millennial kingdom, like you said, it has nothing to do with eternal life. Well, it has nothing to do with their eternal destiny. Obviously, they have everlasting life. So it's not trying to determine whether they have everlasting life. It's kind of silly because they already have everlasting life and God knows it. They know it. But it's related to everlasting life in the sense of, what did you do with it? In other words, every judgment of every Christian relates to everlasting life. It's not to determine whether we have it. It's to determine what we did with it. So can you see why I back off a little when you say it has nothing to do with everlasting life? Sure. I mean, it has something to do with it. You know, we live in a world where there's so much corruption. As we discuss these judgments, isn't it wonderful to know that the king is coming and he's going to judge righteously and perfectly Every one of them. If you read First and Second Thessalonians, that comes through a lot. There's going to be a future vindication, and we are going to rejoice in the fact that there will be fairness. God will judge. People don't get away with anything. If someone goes through life and they accumulate some great fortune by corrupt means, first of all, they're not going to be happy in this life. I don't care how much money they have. But secondly, There are going to be consequences after this life, whether they're a believer or an unbeliever. No wonder John said, even so, Lord, come Come quickly. quickly. And in the meantime, keep keep grace in in focus. Be sure to check out our daily blogs at faithalone.org. They are short and full of great teaching, just like what you've heard today. Find them at faithalone.org slash resources slash blog. We would like to thank all of our financial partners who help us keep this show going. All gifts are tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can be a financial partner, visit us at faithalone.org. On our next episode, were some of the Old Testament believers already born again before they met Christ in His earthly ministry? Please be sure to listen, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.